10 tells us it is written, you shall worship the Lord your God and him only shall you serve. Hello, my name is Sandra Timko and welcome to Lumen Christi. The spirit that many use for discernment is not the Holy Spirit. Satan does have power, but as Christians, we need to discern the spirits. As Catholics, we renounce Satan and all his works every Easter Sunday when we repeat our baptismal promises. Some really believe that Satan doesn't exist. Some feel astrology, palm reading, interpretation of omens, mediums, clairvoyance, fortune telling, horoscope, and magical sorcery, along with spiritism, cross-wearing charms. Some feel that these are not serious sins, but they are serious sins. They are not innocent entertainment. It's a form of paying homage to the, and giving attention to the enemy, Satan and his legions. Serious, serious distraction. Also deception. Today we have with us someone who grew up exposed to witchcraft through one of her grandparents and to enlighten us with important information to help us identify the enemy is my new sister in the Lord Marjorie Rikoff. Yes. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Thank you for having me. I just want to enlighten our audience uh, of how we met a year ago, almost to the date, a year ago in November as a matter mm -hmm. of fact. I visited um, a multi-denominational church on the west side near Wald Lake with a friend. This church was having this wonderful charitable outreach by offering to families that could not afford to provide a Thanksgiving dinner for their family the opportunity to come and sit in on a service and then afterward receive all the fixings for a beautiful meal. And she was hard pressed at the time and invited me to come with her because she had just moved to the area. So we went, and during the ceremony, during the, the wonderful service, uh, the pastor beckoned this young woman to come up and share a bit of her testimony. Mm -hmm. And I watched you up by the microphone, and I was astounded with your beauty. It wasn't just what you were saying that had an impact on me. It was your demeanor while you were saying it. So I invited Marjorie then, if she would like to consider coming on the program at some point. And it's taken a year for this to come together. Yes. So I'm really glad you're here. And it is very uncanny that it's Halloween. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and you're going to share with us how you were exposed to witchcraft. You were born and raised in Haiti. Correct. Um, by my, I was raised by my grandma mostly because my mom was traveling a lot. And uh, my grandpa my grandfather also raised me and uh, for the longest part of my life as far as I know my mom said when I was born she had some very complicated um, I almost died at childbirth but uh, so they had to go to the witch doctor to make sure that I'll be okay and whatever they must have done helped me survive I guess and then um, but throughout the course of my life, my mom became a Christian because she was Catholic. But then after that, she became a born again Christian, believing in the Holy Spirit. Yeah. And when I got, when I was about um, maybe six or seven months, I was very, very healed. And uh, when she went to another witch doctor, they pretty much let her know that um, another witch wanted to murder me, and that's why I was sick. So when I got to nine. I was pretty much paralyzed. My tummy was this big. It was very, I mean, she was scared. So the only thing she thought of was not going to pray was just let me go to a witch doctor and see what they can do to save my daughter a second time. And this time, this person said, well, you know, young lady, if I were you, I'll go to church because at this point, there's nothing we could do for her. So she had a weird dream. Um, and she, she dreamed that she had the, the crust, actually, she, she was wearing in her dream. Um, she threw it out of the window, and the next day there was a revival meeting um, there where she went. And the pastor talked about witch doctors and all those things. You think you know better, you think you know than G better than Jesus. So, And he did an altar call, and she went. And at the time when she went, she became a born-again Christian, and um, they prayed over me, and I survived. And um, continued growing with my grandparents, my grandma, is well was a witch because she passed away about a couple years ago and I found those later I didn't really know because she she raised me so I never thought about her being a witch but I'm hearing stories of transformation of shape shifting and spell casting spells and things of that sort of that nature so uh, very scary 
uh, it's not a game, yeah. it's very serious, and people do uh, sh shift shifting. That's why some of the movies, like Twilight Zone, I cannot endorse those kind of movies, I cannot go to them because I know it does happen in real life, but people do believe, oh, it's just a movie. Did you, do you, as you look back, on your childhood, do you have any memory of her doing any of this? No, those are mostly stories that my mom and other people will say, but I never um, know she was capable of doing, or never caught her doing things like that, so. So how did you, how did you stay removed from it? How did you, once you realized it, did you denounce it? Did you go for deliverance? Did, were you I, concerned about transference? What? Well, I think what happened is for some, I guess it's going to be the Holy Spirit because I right. don't know how it happens. But when I was little, my grandma used to say, why do you sing all these church songs? We don't go to church. And I have no idea to this day I will be singing uh, songs about God, Jesus, but I never really went to church because obviously she wasn't going to church. And I do believe that that was God's way to really protect me without me knowing it because... Mm -hmm. Every time I was happy, I'm singing about church, about Jesus, and all this good stuff, not knowing really what was happening. And I do know my mom said that my grandma wanted to transfer. Actually, when, when she passed away, I was chosen to be her, how do you say it, uh, inheritance? Uh, uh, or a legacy. A legacy, mm -hmm. but God has better mm -hmm. things for me. She did try to pass it on, and um, the Holy Spirit always protected me somehow and never really... Uh, whatever she must have done never really took place in my life, but there's many things that um, touch me, but not to become a witch myself. I never really was interested into those kind of things, never been so fascinated about them. When I was younger, I watched a horror movie, but it wasn't like, ooh, I gotta be one of these people or what have you not. When, when, you, when you started early, before I ask you some more questions about this, I wanna clarify something. Um, you said your mother had been Catholic and yes. then eventually became born again. Correct. Okay. Well, in the Catholic Church, of course, we have, I'm a born again, spirit filled Catholic, okay. mm -hmm. speaking in tongues, laying on of hands. Okay. <laughs> um, and a lot of people will make the mistake of saying, well, there's Catholicism and then there's Correct. Christianity. Well, we are Christian. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, but as far as the baptism of the Holy Spirit, especially for these times, I'm certain as a sister in the Lord, we need those tools yes. because the enemy is so real and so insidious. Mm -hmm. And you mentioned earlier, people watch this stuff and they think it's fascinating or they don't think it's real. Correct. But it's real. And he gets a hold on you by that twisted fascination mm -hmm. and can suck you in. So as you grew up in Haiti, what, what, how old were you when you left? Uh, about eight years old when but I left. that's commonplace there, correct? That's, yes, it's everyday occurrence. I mean, you not, not necessarily that you will see it, right. but in the spirit realm, it's happening all the time. And would you say that um, it's passed from generation to generation to generation? Usually, um, they will be because um, I do believe from my um, grandfather's side, there was uh, spiritualism and other things. So it get passed on, but I'm not sure how the transfer is happening. I do just believe it's that generation where mm -hmm. if you're alcoholic, your grandfather yes. is alcoholic and so on and so forth. So I believe it's the same, it has the same effect. If somebody in your past generation has it, sometime they will transfer, because that's what my grandma was trying to do, where I would be the next person in line to um, have her powers and do whatever. So there was a strong protection around yes. you. And by your singing, you were actually praying twice. Probably. So there was this hedge of protection around mm -hmm. you. But even though at some point you were violated. Yes. How old were you? Uh, six years old. And you were raped? Yes. And was it a family member? Uh, it was three of my cousins. Wow. Yes. Where were you? Um, I was at my grandma's house. And I believe, if I remember correctly, she was out of town. And uh, my cousin lived with, uh, they were visiting, I'm not sure they were with us, but I remember I knew them because we had family dinners and things like that. And j just that night it happened that the three of them were in the house. And don't ask me how it happens because I don't remember really. I just had little pieces of everything. All I remember is the three of them were on top of me and uh, somebody knocked at the door really quick. So I don't even remember if 
all of them had a chance to take turn or if I was one of them and then someone came off, uh, someone came at the door and that thing at, at the time my grandma just showed into the room but by that time it was too late. The damage was done. So were you in shock? Were you screaming? How I, old were these? Uh, my cousins are older than I am so probably I will say nine, twelve and maybe one was eight. Um, but they were young. One was older, but I, I was the youngest at the time. So they were older than I was. So what was your response? Your grandmother comes in? I never told them because by the time I think she came in, everything was already done. So my grandma actually died not even knowing that it happens. So how did you cope with that at such a young age? I believe somehow God must have removed the memory from me because it's, I only had pieces of it from time to time. I just remember and... And I don't even, so sometimes I even question myself, did it really happen? Did you made it up? Because I don't remember exactly. But we do have uh, something called Sozo, which is deep healing. And um, so I went to some of the sessions. This is through your church? This is through uh, my old church. Um, so we have another group from another church that came in and we went through it. So what it does is you go back to what happened. In their healing. In their healing. And mm -hmm. that's how actually those when you ask the Holy Spirit, yes. please show me. Take me back to Take me back to Christ walk through. Correct. Mm -hmm. And that's pretty much where I get the pieces of what was missing. And because um, I always ask, well, would you, why would Jesus let that happen to me? I was only six years old. I mean, why? And I remember from the Sosa session where, uh, because they ask you, ask Jesus where he was when that happened. So I will be, okay, well, I'll ask Jesus, where were you when this happened to me? And that's when he shows, I'm the one that was screaming at them and I was going at the door and actually he's the one who, go, who went and grabbed my mother, my grandmother, because my grandmother has no way she was going to come back. But somehow he went and get her and that's how things is. So. Okay, I want you to repeat that <laughs> because that is powerful. Yes. There are so many people that I've personally ministered to that have been abused, both male and female, sexually, emotionally, and it... it scarred them mm -hmm. for life, okay? Yes. It made them either promiscuous, um, frigid, mm -hmm. mistrusting, they had addictive problems. I mean, it's a terrible tragedy and it strips you of your innocence, Correct. okay? So, they had an anger that had to be rectified. I love you, Jesus, and I know now you're there for me, but where, Where were, were you correct. during this incident? Mm -hmm. So please share that again slowly. This is mind blowing. Thank you. Thank yes. you. So in that session, uh, we ask you to go back to the most, um, the the worst memory that you had that caused that scarf. And from in my case, that memory was the rape, which sometimes I couldn't really remember what happened. So you go back in, you ask the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit bring you back into the, uh, and then you can even see yourself. Uh, Mm -hmm. watching pretty much like you're watching TV and you ask Jesus where were you when that happened and that's when I get my answer when Jesus said I was the one screaming at them and I went and get your grandmother because she wasn't coming back that day and that's totally free me and there was other things that happened but one of them was knowing that Jesus was there and he wasn't well I let it happen and now you're going to deal with the issue because many times we think God is not there but we just don't see in the spirit enough to really know that he's there for us or we think he was there and wouldn't open wouldn't his mouth. He Correct. He wasn't moved to do anything, Correct. that his time to help was yes. after. Exactly. So this is quite amazing. Now, this this um, inner healing that you went through, how long did it last? The inner healing was about, in my case, about a, a good two hours. But usually it's about an hour and a half, but depending on how deep the issue is, it could go up to two hours. We try not to have it going three hours because then it's too much emotional drainage. How many weeks um, of treatments? Or there was actually one time for th this particular one and I did go to uh, Ohio for a advanced healing because even though I was free from the shame of, well, how do you let that happen? What at six years old, hello? You don't let things happen. Things happens to you because you're young. So it, it freed me from knowing that God was there, but I still had some of the shame here and there sometimes coming in. So when I went to that second deep healing, that's when really I got free because then the fragment of little Marjorie become so you because you're so fragmented in your personality that it's hard to comprehend things. So with that 
second emotional healing, I became whole. This is Marjorie Rikoff. Correct. And Marjorie uh, is just an amazing artesian well of information here for anyone that has struggled with any kind of um, emotional, sexual, even spiritual abuse. There are answers. There are programs through the churches mm -hmm. that are Christ-centered, um, people who have studied and have gifts of intercessory healing mm -hmm. and inner healing. Uh, they're the answer. I, I know a lot of people that have spent thousands of dollars at psychotherapists and psychologists. And yes, there are some wonderful Christian mm -hmm. um, doctors, but Christ is here in a interesting way. It's a quick form of healing yes. mm -hmm. because you invite him right to the, where the root is. Correct. And uh, it, the people I know that have taken advantage of, of these types of inner healings after especially years of counseling were... Um, amazed mm -hmm. at how complete and concise this was. Yes. When you knew that you had, all of a sudden it made sense, this illumination happened, oh my gosh, this is what happened, this is how it happened, and so on. Did you feel physically lighter? Yes, I did. And I remember on my second session, I even screamed. That was a weird, that was like a weird... Release. Release. Mm -hmm. And it's almost like... You free yourself from all these years of holding Bondage. things and thinking it was your fault or you did it or maybe, who knows, I mean, who knows what kind of guilt can sometimes go into through our mind. And uh, the weirdest thing was I'll be fine before, those, uh, before the deep healing, I'll be fine for a year or two or three. And then fourth year, you know, the enemy will come. Do you remember what happened? But since it's so fragmented, I will never remember. So it was torturing me year over year, and sometime I'll be free, and other time he'll come back. But now, poof, come on, bring it on, because now I'm free. <laughs> and, and you know the power of the Holy Spirit yes. and the blood of Christ. Correct. Praying by the blood of Christ. The enemy yes. can't cross that bloodline. Correct. When the enemy would torture you like this, well, did you have pattern behavior that you would fall into? Uh, fortunately, we had my parents were pretty strong in their Christian life, so I, I wasn't a promiscuous young lady. I didn't have, I mean, uh, I was still a virgin when I got married, so I guess I went the di different route versus some other people when they get uh, mm -hmm. raped, usually they go out there and sleep with everybody or anybody. In my case, it was like, I got hurt once. Shame on me if somebody even try a second time. And that was my controlling spirit that I had for the longest time because that was my way. I couldn't control what happened to me but surely I'll control anything now. And so I got free from that control, controlling spirit. So besides the, the shame issue that you needed to be freed mm -hmm. from, there was this control Correct. spirit. yes. Um, which was a protective yes. Uh, mechanism. Yes. So that you could try to eliminate anybody hurting you again. Did it affect you in your marriage? Yes, it did. Mm -hmm. uh, for the well, I guess it was easier for me when I was dating my husband. We never slept together because, in my mind, as a Christian, that's right, you do not, not sleep accepted. around. So, but I thought that was because I was a good Christian that it didn't happen. But I, once we got married and it still didn't happen, I was like, "Ooh, I'm in trouble." Then that's when I really started. I need, I need to find healing somehow so I can be a wife to my husband. Uh, be a wife to my husband. Yes. You know, that's, that's a wonderful admission of that because I, um, I have ministered to so many women that uh, um, they begin to accept that it's acceptable that they do not partner with their husband, okay? And really, truly, there's some deep-seated mm -hmm. problems there. Or um, it's easier as they... It starts a vicious cycle, though, because... Uh, as man and wife, that's this beautiful gift Christ mm -hmm. gave us to bond, inviting him in. And um, when you remove that aspect, it changes the dimensions of how deep the relationship can be. Correct. And it can cause great resentment. And it can keep out the closeness that needs yes. to be there. So you wound somebody when you deny them what marriage is partially about. Mm -hmm. Was your husband feeling dejected? And He did, but I did explain to him what happened, and he was very... My husband is such a nice person. 
like, ah, I cannot believe he even waited four years anyway. I thought that was like, wow, I got to marry that four guy. Four years? We, we dated four years and we never did anything. So. Now, there's, there <laughs> is another inspiring statement from you. Because people think just because they're adults or because they're engaged or they talk about planning to be married, well, this is going to ultimately be my mate so we can um, mm -hmm. enter into premarital sex. But you don't know what's going to happen. Correct. And so the, the whole scenario could change and you have given what should have been your mates mm -hmm. to somebody else. And you lose a lot of blessings because of that. So you and he waited four years. How old were you? Uh, when I got married, I was 20, 33, so I was probably in my 20-something. 20, 20 <laughs> oh, my goodness. And he yes. never pressured you? Uh, my husband is older. He's been married before, had a child, so I'm sure for him that was a lot of pressure, but he never pressured me because uh, when we met, I told him, I think on the second date, because he wanted to kiss me. I was like, ooh, let me tell you a secret about me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> he was like, okay. And I thought he was going to be running the other way, but he stayed around. So He was honoring you. Yes. He was honoring yes. you. And, but unfortunate, he waited for this wonderful gift. And then that didn't happen. Wow. Yes. So you were frigid. Very. And um, he understood. Yes. And he never pressured you? Never pressured me. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> this is truly a man of I God. I believe that God made Kevin just for me. Yes, yes. Really. So you go through this healing. We go through this healing, and then um, first time thing didn't go so well. We were trying. It's getting better and better, but the second time it was the most free one because even though I know that God was there, I was still questioning the reason why he let it happen because you're there, but why would you let it happen? And on my second deeper emotional at a different place, it was where um, I see myself in the bed and God was, like Jesus was right there between the two of them. So it's almost like, yes, that did violate me, but nothing but really happened. Yeah. Exactly. So that was like, wow. Wow. Yes. If by <laughs> chance someone wants to talk to you, and oh, believe me, I've gotten so many calls over the years of young women and men who were abused um, at some point in their childhood and they never felt they had anyone to talk to. They even felt it difficult to talk to a counselor because mm -hmm. they thought, well, this person's never experienced exactly. this level of pain and shame. And the, the shame is where I think the yes. enemy works the greatest oh, yes. because it is it is not your fault. But he infiltrates the mind, making you believe that it was, and it paralyzes you. Correct. So would you share with someone? Uh, I can share my personal email. It's mbalta, M-B-A-L-T-H-A, at yahoo.com. That's the email. And if someone wanted you to come and speak, would you object to um, that? I never done it, but I'm open to if God is opening a door, why not? <laughs> okay, so again, give your email. M-B-A-L-T-H-A at yahoo.com. It's amazing. It's amazing what you've gone through and how honest and open you are about the wounds. That's because I'm free from the shame. Before, there's no way I could have talked to you about what happened to me and not be in tears and be frazzled for about a week or two. Well, I loved what you said, though, that even when you had this opportunity to go through inner healing, you even wondered for a while, was this me? Did I, did I do this for attention? Mm -hmm. Was, you know, did it really happen? Was it a dream right. that you were concerned enough about the validity of it that you were searching that out in your mind and your heart? You didn't just say, this happened, I know, and blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. you, you sorted through it. And um, I, I think this took tremendous courage. But I love the fact that the Holy Spirit has revealed to you and you've received it. Yes. Because there are people that pray for revelation knowledge and they receive it and then they don't apply it and move forward. But you have. And how lovely that your husband would wait for you. Yes. But you're obviously <laughs> worth waiting for, right? <laughs> Thank you. So, so tell me, a favorite scripture. Do you have a favorite scripture? Uh, my favorite scripture is Jeremiah 21, 11. For I know the plan I have for you. Plan not to, I don't know it by heart, but 
it's my very favorite plan not to destroy you but to give your life or something of that nature but that's my I always stand on that because I know God has my best he has he knows what's best for me sometimes I don't see it and I walk in the dark sometimes and I scream like ah, I don't know where you're going Jesus but I know he has the plan in his hand and then he know me before I even before I even was born he knew me so he he got me <laughs> do you have a great aspiration to, or a plan or a dream or a desire of your heart that you hope he uses your gifts and talents in? Um, I would love to see God use me to talk to other women and um, eventually be part of that ministry. I'm part of it right now at my church, but on a greater level because if for all these years I've been a prisoner of Satan for all these years because of the shame and the feeling of did it happen, did it not happen, am I making this up? And, and actually never, I think actually my husband is the one who told my mom about it last year because I never even told her. I never admit that to any of my family. And that's a very big burden for the victim to go on for years and years and never said anything about it. Plus, even saying something is not going to free you. Only Jesus can free you in the Holy Spirit. So I would love to see God use me in that matter and just... Now, your cousins, the people that yes. were involved, did you ever have an opportunity to confront them? Um, actually, no. No, never did. And uh, they're still in Haiti, and I'm here, so I don't have... Um, I know when their moms passed away, my mom went down there to help out, but I didn't go because I was I was a little bit younger. So, uh, no, and I, I fu really fu fully forgive them. Before, I believe, before those uh, sessions of deep healing, before God healed me, there was no way if I saw them I could keep a straight face. Because I remember when I was a little bit younger, when my uncle said, oh, I'm going to have them visit. I was like, oh. Oh, yeah, fear. So, but now I'm, I'm totally fine, yes. So wow. if I were to meet them, uh, they are forgiven. And I know God has planned for them. And who knows, God can also heal. heal. Not only I hope they, heal, they will get healed, but that God can use them also. And wouldn't it be wonderful if someday they were far enough along in their walk with Christ that they could ask for your forgiveness? There's a whole, there's a whole technique, mm -hmm. not only to giving forgiveness, but to, to receiving receive forgiveness yes. and having it be effective. Yes. And how that's something we should pray for our sister in Christ, that someday these young boys, but now men, men. would be long enough in Christ that they would ask for your forgiveness just to complete the whole Circle. That would that would be so wonderful. Yes. And then one other thing I wanted to add, it's about soul tie, because you were oh, mentioning. Yes. Yes. So obviously you break all the soul tie with anybody that you were in contact with mentally, physically, or sexually. So all those soul ties were broken, so that way you have no more attachment, with yes. spiritual attachment. With and, and that is true. That is absolutely yes. true. The soul ties can just bind yes. you. Well, my dear... You were fabulous. Thank you, Thank very you much for so having much. Me. God bless you <laughs> for being you. so open and honest. And John 10, verses 9 through 11 gives us a better way and, and hope. I am the gate. Whoever enters through me will be saved and will come in and go out and find pasture. A thief comes only to steal and slaughter and destroy. I came so that they might have life and have it more abundantly. And as always, remember to let Christ's light shine through you. Mm -hmm.